How did you learn about this uh, relationship between uh, Mr. Wade? I think this has been acknowledged now by both parties, correct? It has, yes. It's a dispute as to when it began, but it's acknowledged that they had a, or, or it, I don't know if they still do, but at least had a romantic relationship. Yes, that's How did you figure that out? How did you find out? So at first, um, I knew Mr. Wade and I, I knew Miss Willis, um, and a lot of people in the community were a little surprised to see Nathan, um, Mr. Wade, handling this case. It was just a lot of people said that and so a lot of people were talking about that and just it was kind of surprising because it's not really you know he does he does a lot of, of of law practice but this isn't what you would imagine him doing did you ever see him have other billings I mean, how do you have time to represent anybody else when he's billing you know 24 hours a day to Fulton County he has um he had other people working for him like he had a law student working for him for a while and then he had a first year associate um so I'm assuming that they would probably do whatever other work he had did you ever look at his calendar do you have access to that to see no. if it matched up no I didn't have access to his calendar and I didn't have access to their um their fun, like text messages I mean I was able to get their um get his geolocation data through subpoena but the I mean the one thing that really struck me is if if I was accused of something and I was saying I didn't do it I would download my phone. Um, they have they have a system. It's called Celebrate. Celebrate, um, and Fulton County pays for it. City of Atlanta pays for it. It's a it's literally a system that you can hook your phone into. I, I have an investigator that has it, and I have my clients do it all the time. Um, you you hook your phone up, and it can find deleted text. It can find everything, um, and you can limit it. You can say I only want texts with this person. So you know if I was being accused of having an affair with someone, and I said it didn't start until April, and someone else said it started in October. The easiest thing to do is, to, you know, download that phone. And for privacy concerns, you can file it under seal, but you could easily narrow it down and say, I want this timeline. I want all of our texts from, you know, November 2021. And it would easily tell whether or not they were romantic in nature. Before I leave the billing issues, mm -hmm. did you ever compare Floyd and Cross's bills to Wade's to see if they were billing a meeting together like there was a that meeting with teams or what were, were they billing for the same meetings as well so i looked at that um one thing is we don't have most of floyd's so floyd has not billed in quite some time so i didn't have his to compare but i did look at anna cross's um the one day that i remember looking at was when they were in federal court to see because nath so so miss cross was the one actually litigating in federal court but Mr. Wade was just was sitting there with them um, at council table, and they both billed for that. I wanted to see if he billed for time that he was sitting in court waiting, um, because I know in, in Cobb County, for example, with appointed work, if we're sitting in court waiting, we can't bill unless we're actually doing something. Like they won't pay for two people to sit there, um, and so I wanted to look at that. But they were both there in court that day. What about the teams meeting where he billed for? Were either of them involved in that team since they're also outside special counsel? No, they were not. So all of those people were um, people who would not have itemized that. Okay. Employees. Right. Back back to yeah. your uncovering the uh, okay. <laughs> relationship. Yes. How did yes. you figure it out? So, um, so Terrence Bradley was Nathan Wade's law partner originally and he was also his his lawyer in the divorce i did not at the time know that they had filed for divorce um i knew nathan's wife i knew both of them historically from cobb county i mean they're you know every, people knew them in cobb county um mr bradley actually called me after an article we were looking into the financial irregularities we we're looking into how much money had been paid because everybody in the case was kind of like what you know why do you have special on this counsel case? on this case yeah like was why bradley are bradley still a partner with wade at that time he was not um he there was testimony that their partnership ended in summer of 2023 so it had just ended is my understanding um and it's you know it's kind of unclear like what month the testimony is very unclear as to when they actually I have I have when they dissolved I think it was September but it's very unclear as to their partnership and and I will say their partnership was a loose partnership um, they had a partnership with the bar but they all had separate legal entities so each of them were filed as the law office of Terrence Bradley law office of Nathan Wade they had some joint bank accounts but then they had some separate bank accounts so I don't really know the exact structure it was a very loose type of organization um, but they were working together and so Terrence actually called me he had seen an article where I had done open records with another lawyer Manny Aurora and we had um, uncovered how much money everybody had made <clears throat> The news had gotten wind of that, and I later learned that the news had open records to get all of my open records. So every time I would get something, the news would get it, because um, I wondered how that happened. But so that somebody published that, and 
I had done some more open records. And Miss Willis actually called Mr. Bradley when I did these open records and said, they're looking into us. And he called me because he was worried about it. And so we had a conversation and he's, he actually asked me, do I need a lawyer? It, you know, what's going on? What are you investigating? What's the parameters of this? And we had a conversation and I said, well, my interests are different than yours. Um, I represent Mr. Roman, so I can't advise you. That would be a conflict. Um, he asked if John, my husband, could. And I said, no, that's a conflict too. Um, <coughs> You know, if, if you feel like you need somebody, you need to talk to someone else. Um, at the time, it was that was early in September. I had court in Cobb County, and I ran into Mr. Bradley. I was in Judge Harris's courtroom. I think it was sept it was either September 11th or 13th. I checked my calendar um, a week or so ago, but it was one of those dates. And I was taking a plea in front of Judge Harris, and Mr. Bradley was also there. Um, another lawyer who ultimately represented Mr. Bradley at our hearing, B.C. Chopra, he was there in court also. And then a friend of all of ours, who's a district attorney, his name is Bert Cohen. He was taking the plea with me. And Bert and I have known each other for a long time. Terrence, BC, everybody's known each other for a long time. We were all sitting in a conference room attached to that courtroom, waiting for the pleas, um, chit-chatting, took the plea, went back in, and Mr. Bradley essentially went through the whole the whole thing and said, well, this is what's really happening. Um, I had a notepad and I took notes on all the things to ask for for open records. Um, so what did he say was really happening when he said this is what's happening? He said that they met at a judicial conference before, he was very specific that it was before she became DA because that was one of the things that he, could, he couldn't remember when the judicial conference was, but he knew that it was before she became DA. When and did she become DA? She became DA in, um, Jan it would have been January 2021. Okay. So she became G DA January 1st, 2021, but she had a transition team leading up to that. So, and, and Mr. Wade was in charge of her transition team. So Mr. Bradley told me all of that. We, we met for about an hour. Um, said that they had been they had been together they met at this conference nathan was still married um and he mr bradley was upset because of what happened in the divorce he was upset because they were still married you know the wades were still married and he essentially just left her after meeting miss willis and dropping the kids off at college so and bradley was wade's attorney in that divorce action you're talking about Okay. Yes, I didn't know that at the time. But they were law partners. They had been, okay. yes. Okay. And I actually don't know if they, he was still his attorney when he talked to me. I don't know if he was or not. All right. Um, because at some point, Mr. Wade represented himself, and then he hired a different lawyer. So I, I didn't know anything about the divorce okay. at that time. Um, so Bradley did not like the way Wade had treated his wife. He did not. He but he not, represented him. He did not like okay. the way he had treated his wife. He didn't like what was happening in the divorce proceeding, yes. Okay. And, I mean, I remember specifically him saying, you know, I handle my business, things like that. Like, you know, that I, I don't leave my wife without alimony. Because this and, – and we talked about it. I mean, Miss Wade had been a stay-at-home mom for – you know, they'd been married almost 30 years. And literally it was right after they dropped their, their youngest off at college that he said, move out, you know. Um, and so – we went through, you know, I was obviously interested in, wait, what? What's what's happening? Um, walk me through this. And so he was telling me about the um, the access cards, you know, that Mr. Wade had access cards, telling me about the contracts, told me about their contract, that they had a, um, that Nathan had brought them the contract for the first appearance hearings. They had a contract for that. We didn't talk about that yet. Um, that they had the contract for the taint work, and then ultimately that Nathan was hired as the attorney on this case. Um, that they had been dating before, and he, I mean, he told me, you know, they met at hotels, um, he would go to her, her place, um, and he's, I remember him saying, you need to find her, um, her bestie, who they had a falling out, that's the person whose condo it was that they would meet at. And, and I did, did you later determine who that bestie was? Yes, it was um, Robin Yerdy. It was not until some time later that I determined that. It was, it was <laughs> very difficult to determine who that was because he did not remember her name. And But, but he knew her by sight? He did. Did and he later confirm to you or identify who, who she was? Yes. So I had sent him a couple pictures or showed him a couple pictures of some other folks. Or this names. was in January of... 24 right yes. before your motion it okay. was it may have even been after i filed the motion it was around the time it was either before or around the time but it was in january um i had gotten some yeah. open records requests from the da's office they had a contract um yep we just put on screen some Perfect. of the text messages that you produced to us yes this yes. is from your phone it is and, and so you're the, talking to him 
Terrence Bradley I see over there on the left. Yes, and so when you see on the 14th, that one that's right in the middle that says file attachment with MIME type, yes. that is a picture of her. So right. it doesn't show up on this, but it's actually there's a picture so of So while movie. you're texting, you're shooting him a picture to see if he can identify Robin Yearty? Yes, yes. Did and he identify her? He did, yes. He, he said, yes, that's her. That's the East Point. And he thought the apartment was in East Point. I later found out it was in Hapeville, but those are very right. close in, in you know, close areas. So he knew they would meet at that apartment? He did, yes. He knew all okay. about it. Um, and it was hard to find Miss Yearty. What happened, and she was Robin Bryant, and then she got married and was Yearty. Um, I did an open records request for a contract that the DA's office got. It's called Critical Mention. They, um, she has a, I, I guess he's like, he's an attorney, but he's sort of in charge of communications. His name is Jeff DeSantis. He, right after Miss Willis had opened the investigation in this case, that same week, um, he contracted a company called Critical Mention, which is a media monitoring company. They do they put a dollar figure basically on your media presence and they give you these analytical reports. And they, they say, you know, hey, you, you did great on MSNBC, that's a million dollars worth of, you know, stuff for your brand. The Fonny Willis brand is doing well, or, or, you know, this phrase is doing well, things like that. She had an employee in her office that was responsible for promoting her image her publicity she had a publicly funded contract for this um so so jeff desantis con jeff desantis contracted or called this company and it's in the emails um i think i provided those as well but contacted critical mention and said we need to hire you to do media monitoring and it was the same week that she had sent the letter to um to raffensperger and kemp about this case said we need to have a contract to do media monitoring Got ten thousand dollars approved. Paid ten thousand dollars for a year contract for an annual contract. Who approved that? Um, Jeff DeSantis's email said the county approved it, and his emails indicated that it was hard to get approved. Um, that he had to really push. I think is what he he said. Um, there's some language to that, but the county paid for it. Do um, other DAs do that? I've ne I'd never even heard of media monitoring. I didn't even know yeah. it existed. Um, no, no. I was. Th it was very shocking. Um, but so I got some of the emails about this media monitoring. So what, what they, I did open records, and again, once I got them, they shut me down and wouldn't give me anything else. But so these emails have attachments, they're PDFs, and you can see in the emails the hyperlink to them where you can actually see the analytical reports. I, that's what I wanted to get, and obviously nobody would give those to me. But these, these emails showed a trail where two people in her office, so Ms. Willis, Mr. Um, DeSantis, and then Robin Yearty, were the ones that had access to these to this this critical mention profile it's like a it's a platform that you can log into and see you know how am i doing in the media um what was robin yearty's role in the da's office she was a liaison between the news organizations so she said that like when cnn msnbc wanted her on they would call robin and she would coordinate it she would do her hair and makeup and then she would coordinate um her interviews but so the, how I found Robin was I'm going through these emails, and all of a sudden I see an email from Mr. DeSantis saying, take Robin off of this account. She's no longer with the office. And I was like, oh, I wonder if that's her. And so I found a picture of her, and I asked Terrence, is that her? Because I found out she had been fired or, or had been let go or had quit or whatever it was. Um, and so that's how I was able to figure out who Robin Yearty was. Then we were able to run her, get, you know, run her information, get an address, um, and that's how we were able to narrow down where this hateful condo was. Okay, so that's where um, basically Miss Willis and Mr. Wade would meet yes. for their uh, relationship. Yes.